<clears throat> okay, so what did we say? We said, this is the Sikha of the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1992. 1992, I guess, well, I mean, I, probably was 19, no, it was 1991. Huh? 1991, Tafshin, Nun, Bait, but like now, the the the, the is still before January. <clears throat> so the Rebbe is talking about <clears throat> oil, oil. The holiday of Hanukkah is centered around oil, and this is especially stressed in the fact that the holiday of Hanukkah is the only Jewish holiday that doesn't celebrate it by making meals. All the other holidays, you have a, what's called a holiday meal. <clears throat> Surat HaChag. And Hanukkah does not have a meal. Why, it does not have a meal. Why? Because Hanukkah, <clears throat> unlike all the other holidays, it centers around oil. And meals, a meal, is mainly consisting of water and bread, some sort of liquids, and bread, some sort of food, and wine which that indicates also it corresponds to three types of Torah, and more exactly two types of Torah, the revealed Torah, the laws of the Torah, the, the, the stories of the Torah, and the secrets of the Torah. That's the wine. The bread and the water is the revealed part of the Torah. The wine is the secrets of the Torah. <clears throat> the holiday of Hanukkah is based on oil. Oil cannot be eaten alone. Oil has to be part of a meal. You could drink wine alone. You could drink water alone. You could eat bread alone. <clears throat> but oil, you can't eat alone. It's not healthy. It has to be mixed with something else. <clears throat> it's too concentrated. It's oil that represents in the Torah what's called the secrets of the secrets. <clears throat> not just mysteries or deep mysteries. This is it's a whole different dimension of mystery. What is that dimension of mystery? God himself. The mysteries of the Torah, those the aspects, the hidden aspects of God, Kabbalah. The mystery of the mysteries is talking about God himself. God himself is above all of the spiritual, above all of the other mysteries. He creates all the other mysteries. On the other hand, the same God is in the world. In the world, in every aspect of the world, God is creating everything all the time the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows. This is totally incomprehensible. That's what's called the oil of the Torah. And that's what Hasidut deals with, especially Hasidut Chabad. That's going to be the whole idea of the Mashiach. It says that's the whole, <clears throat> that's the whole main thing of the holiday of <clears throat> Hanukkah. And that's, that's the power that's going to defeat, transform, the Greek outlook on life, that everything is for me. <clears throat> Selfishness. The whole miracle of Hanukkah was pure oil. They found one bottle of oil, and it was made a miracle that it lasted for eight days. I don't remember, did we do this before? One minute, one minute, one minute. We did this, we did this, we did it. Right. The main miracle of this <clears throat> oil <clears throat> that was in the miracle of the oil of Hanukkah, it, the main, when is this revealed nowadays? When do we see it? Yotet Kislev. Yotet Kislev is six days before Hanukkah. That in <clears throat> In the miracle of Yutet Kislev, what happened? That was when Hasidut, Chabad, was really freed to the world. In the beginning, the first Rebbe of Chabad, he wrote Hasidut Chabad, he wrote the ideas, <clears throat> but he wrote them in a very short way. That's the whole book of the Tanya. After the Alta Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, he got out of prison <clears throat> where he was put by his enemies he got out of prison, was Yutet Kislev, he realized that this was also an okay from above, that he could start spreading out his ideas of Hasidut. The Hasidut, that is the oil of the Torah. The oil. 
it explains how the essence of God is much, much above. It creates all of the other mysteries. But on the other hand, he's infinitely, infinitely close <coughs> to us. Yutet Kislev. Explaining and bringing out the godliness in all the commandments and all the Torah. Shabbat Shalom. This is the main thing of spreading out your wellsprings outward. That's what the Baal Shem Tov, Hasidu, etc. Right, the Baal Shem Tov. It was on <coughs> one Rosh Hashanah, <coughs> and the Baal Shem Tov had an experience where he went up. To, his soul went up to the chamber of the Mashiach, and he said, "When are you going to come, Mashiach? Everybody's going crazy." And the Mashiach said, when your wellsprings are spread out, <clears throat> after, even after that the decree of the Greeks <clears throat> was defeated, the decree of the Greeks was rescinded. What did the Greeks want to do? To make the Jews forget your Torah? <clears throat> what made the Greeks leave this idea by the what's called the illuminator of the Torah, the godliness in the Torah, the miracle of the oil of Hanukkah. Just think about it. What was the miracle of Hanukkah? It was a physical miracle. They were actually real, physical Jews, and they fought a real, physical, bloody battle, and they had a real, actual, physical victory. And where did this come from? It came from the deepest essence of the Torah. You figure God, the essence of the Torah, that's for going to heaven or something. After, you know, what do you care if you win battles? The main thing, you go to heaven, right? You die fighting and you go up to, to the highest levels of heaven. You're fighting for God. He said, no, 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 that's not what we want. We're not interested at all in going to heaven. We want to win the battle and light lights in of Hanukkah in the Holy Temple. We don't care about heaven. We don't care about level revelations or, 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 or gifts. All we want is physical, actual victory, that the Greeks should leave us alone spiritually and physically, let the Jews serve, the way, and, and even more. We actually want <clears throat> to change the Greeks around, which they didn't succeed in doing. But Hasidut Chabad will succeed What we want is that the miracle of Hanukkah, the light of the oil, the secrets of the secret should be drawn down that even when, <clears throat> when the main learning of Torah is in the revealed Torah, the Talmud, etc., Sharigamba Zamana Tanaim, also in the time of the Tanas and the Amoras, right? These holy <clears throat> Jews in the time of the after the destruction of the temple, at the end of the second temple, they had the power to raise the dead, it says. <clears throat> and after the temple was destroyed, all of the wisdom of Kabbalah was concealed in their days. And it was hidden from all the Talmud Chachamim. But what? Only sp special people knew the secrets of the Torah, even the wine of the Torah. Nevertheless, and these few people, <clears throat> they, they knew the Torah, they kept it quiet to themselves. Like it says in the Gomorrah, that all the, even Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that he wrote the Zohar, a Kodesh, it was not given permission to reveal only to who and it, him and his friends alone. <clears throat> only now, in these last generations, <clears throat> can these secrets be revealed. Like the Arizal says, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, that specifically in these generations, it is permissible and it is a commandment to reveal these secrets of the Torah. Until the secret and the, the inner Torah was chasidut, was revealed by the Baal Shem Tov and the Magi. Because <clears throat> you have to remember, the revealing, that you can reveal these secrets of the Torah and you can do it like they have in this, now is a big thing, coaching and stuff like this. So you can use it in order to change people's personalities and outlooks on the world and, and people's uh, paradigms and things like that. <clears throat> no. You should understand that the secrets of the Torah are exactly that. They're the soul of the Torah. They're there in order to enhance the learning of the Torah and the doing of the commandments. <clears throat> the idea of taking Kabbalistic ideas and separating them, divorcing them from the teaching of the Torah, 
This is a, a, a tantamount to murder, taking the soul and so, separating it from the body. What is murder? You take a person's soul and separate it from his body. Essentially, it's like trying to kill Judaism. <clears throat> I remember I read, before I was religious, I read, uh, I was into all sorts of mysticism and all this other. I read the books, you know, I didn't really practice anything. I had friends that used to practice these things. I, I didn't, I could never <clears throat> get myself. I was always afraid of getting into something I wouldn't be able to get out of. But there was one <clears throat> big mystic. I don't, have, I don't want to say his name. He was some guy from England. And he was a big expert in Kabbalah. In Kabbalah. And he, he used it, and he used it for, for practical purposes. He would bring up all sorts of spirits and things like this. My, my friends that I had were sort of into that. Non-Jews. And then, of course, you have, you know, the, the <clears throat> there were people in Israel. What's his name? Gershon Sholem, these people, right? And they, I mean, they're very proud of it. They didn't do Torah. They didn't do commandments. I don't know if they were married to Jews. I don't know what, what's their story. Martin, Martin Buber and these people. But especially Gershon Sholem. He got a, 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 a degree. No, no. A, a press. A Nobel Peace Prize. A Nobel Prize, a prize of Literature for Kabbalah. They didn't even know what it was. And he, so he separated and divorced <clears throat> Kabbalistic ideas from Torah and the commandments and God. It just you know interesting ideas like learning the you know Tibetan Book of the Dead or something. You're not going to do it. The the, <clears throat> the ideas of, of Hasidut are to enliven Judaism, enliven Torah, enliven the commandments, <clears throat> to enliven your day to day life with a connection to God. That's the idea of Hasidut. That's what's going to bring the Mashiach. That the whole entire world will re re realize. That they're being created by God. And that God loves them. And the, God, the, the, the deepest of deepest secrets will come down into the most mundane day-to-day -day things. By means of understanding and grasping. Especially by means of the first Rebbe of Chabad. That was Yutet Kislev. That's the holiday we celebrated just a few days ago. Kolomer, in other words. And Chanukah is stressed mainly the effect of the <coughs> oil. And the light of the Torah. And learning the revealed part of the Torah. That that's the main part of the Torah. This was permeated with the knowledge and the feeling of the holiness of the Torah. That the Torah is the wisdom of God. Like it says, Torah Techa, what the Greeks wanted them to forget. That was Hanukkah. The, and the, 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 holiday, the miracle of Hanukkah is that God was put back into the Torah. The Greeks wanted to make the Torah just another book of literature. <clears throat> Or at best, a religion book, but not a God book. And the, and the, the Maccabees fought so that the Torah would be a holy book. It would be a God book. It would be the book of the creator of the universe. The Torah. That's what happened at Hanukkah. The main novelty of Yutet Kislev, namely the true, re, re, complete redemption of this oil of the Torah, is that by means of this, the secrets of the secrets of the Torah <clears throat> would become learnable and understandable to everybody. Not just in a way that you mix the oil is mixed in with the food. Right? Like we said, oil can't be eaten alone. It has to be mixed in with something else. So the something else here that we mix the secrets of the secrets of the Torah, that that's the oil, is in the food and the bread and the water. That's the revealed Torah. But even more, that we can learn the secrets of the secrets on their own. And that becomes the main thing. In other words, feeling God. Feeling God in everything. Understanding and grasping in human understanding that you would be able to understand God. And that's the whole essence of Mashiach, that the whole world will have a comprehension and, a, how do you say, a friendly relationship with God, the creator of the universe. <clears throat> that's what it means, that everyone will be nourished by the understanding of godliness. Just like physical food. There becomes actual food. People actually be fed by the secrets of the Torah. I mean, you can just take a simple example. Let's take a simple example, right? <clears throat> worry. People are worried. When people are worried, they feel miserable. They feel awful. People that are worried. worried. If you believe that, listen, God is with you, 
you have to do your best, but there's no reason to, for worry. Worry is just counterproductive. You have to do your best, trust in God, try to find out what your part is, do your part as much as possible, pray to God for help, but you should know that God is helpful, and, and God forbid anything not good happens, it's because that's what God wanted. For some reason, you have to know how to be positive in every situation. <clears throat> then that situation transforms to be good. So here we have a simple idea of believing in God, <clears throat> and all of a sudden this becomes your nourishment. Instead of being nourished by worries and, and hatred and jealousy, all of a sudden you're nourished by you know, assurance that God is with you and God is making everything happening and everything is for the best, but you have to be his partner. You can't just sit there and do nothing unless that's what the situation calls for. Sometimes the situation calls for doing nothing. Right, somebody cuts you off on the road, right? Sometimes you just have to keep quiet and do nothing. Who knows? That that each and every situation has its own demands that you can learn by experience, you can learn by wisdom. But the fact is, you know that God is the boss. That is nourishment. How can you know that God is the boss? God is so far away. Who says he even exists? Is the secrets of the secrets of the Torah when they are made understandable. So then God becomes also more approachable, more user-friendly. The reason is why now in our generation will be revealed these secrets of the secrets <clears throat> in a way of understanding because yoter <inaudible> because there's more darkness now in the world. And because there's more darkness, especially the, <clears throat> the darkness of external ideas and philosophies that come from that are nurtured from the Torah in a way that's not good. Therefore, there's more and more danger. <clears throat> this danger of the Greeks that there was back then, it just started with the Greeks. It was temporarily, how do you say, quelled by our efforts in the time of Hanukkah, but it's still there. And in fact, the darkness has become more and more and more. Now, in one way, the darkness is even greater than it was back then. Now it is greater ignorance. If I take an example in Russia, there was no Jewish education 70 years, no such thing as Jewish education. People had to educate their children in secret in the basement. Or and therefore, there's a necessity of revealing the oil of the Torah until it becomes necessary, just like food. <clears throat> Even though in the, the previous generations, there was not permission to revel, reveal this deep wisdom to everybody, just like oil that you can't drink it alone because it's dangerous, it hurts a person, oil. But now, because the, of the darkness, it's necessary, the only antidote to the ignorance and to the darkness, which is perverting and diluting and concealing Judaism, which Judaism is the hope for the whole world. Without that, there's always going to be wars and destruction, depression and aggression, addictions, by means of this in the last generations itself, that all that the darkness gets worse and worse, so also the oil of the Torah becomes more and more spread out. For instance, let's take an ex a, a, a very blatant example. <clears throat> in the time of the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, when it was founded, what's called Chevret Mafitze Haskala, when they, <clears throat> they, they came the teachings of what's called Enlightenment Judaism became really, really popular. Omar Biyah said, Tomchitamimim. The fifth Rebbe of Chabad, he founded Tomchitamimim. The yeshiva that in it was taught the revealed Torah and also Chasidut, the teachings of the inside of the Torah, in a way that Chasidut could be understood. And just like we understand the revealed Torah, just like you understand a Mishnah or a Halacha, a law. You can understand ideas of chasirut. <clears throat> Why? Because the darkness became so great. <clears throat> is therefore, listen, man, in, in especially Zionism, right? Zionism was a, 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 an idea that wanted to say that Judaism has nothing to do with God. It's all a nationality. Before it was a sort of a philosophy that wanted to say the Jews have nothing to do with God. But they didn't have anything really concrete 
to substitute God with. They had philosophy, ideas, pleasures of the world, being like the non-Jews. But, but Zionism said that we're really going to be like the non-Jews. We're going to have our own country, and that's going to be the new Jewish identity, our nationality. And there was all sorts of philosophies that went along with it, and etc. It says, in, in these days, <clears throat> in, the, in these days, these days, these latter days, <clears throat> is that's when the yeshivas of Chabad were founded, where they learned Hasidut as part of the yeshiva. <clears throat> and not only that, the, the, that was the fifth Rebbe of Chabad. He made the yeshiva, all the yeshivas of Chabad are called Tom Chetamim. Came afterwards, his son, the, the, the son of the fifth Rebbe, became the sixth Rebbe, Mori Chami, the, the father-in-law of, the, of our Rebbe, and the father the, was called Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak. And he founded yeshivas Tom Chetamim in, every, in all corners of the world. The Rebbe Rashab could only do it in, in Russia. But the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe made Tom Chitamimim all over the world. And more and more powerful, more and more powerful. Spreading out. <clears throat> and also, and this is the main thing, Shaholich v'nit that it added on spreading out of the Torah of Hasidut outside Mamish, not just the yeshivas, but the teachings of Hasidut became spread out more and more by means of translating. He translated into all these different languages the ideas of Hasidut in French and in Spanish and in English, and in, <clears throat> that by means of this was made a complete revelation of the light of Hanukkah, that it came out even to the outside, like it says, on the outside of your house. At the Kali of the Ragla of Tarmudai, it says, until even the, the last stragglers who were left uh, and, and left. The, the marketplace, and it was really starting to get dark, the word for stragglers in, in, in Hebrew is tarmudai. I don't, maybe it's even Aramaic. It says it was a nation of people that they would wait for everybody to leave the, the, uh, the uh, race, whatever. They would wait for everyone to leave the marketplace, and they would collect little sticks and go around and sell everybody in the houses these little sticks for firewood, for tinder for the houses. It says even the tarmudai. Now, tarmudai as the letters of Moredit, the people who rebel against God. <clears throat> so what's the Rebbe trying to say? The Rebbe is trying to say that the solution to all the world's problems is education. And education as to who we really are. And what a non-Jew is, that the creations of God. When a person feels this, is then his potential starts to come out. And then God's potential starts to come out. The world becomes more blessed. But by means of this, that the deep secrets of the Torah are spread out, the ones that are in Hasidut, which is that's called the oil of the Torah. By means of this, it comes in, in, in such a way that it's spread out even to the farthest corners. Not just that the oil of the Torah, it illuminates the opening of your house outside, but even more, that the outside itself comes and shines. The Rebbe has a mimer like this, that he says that there is a, a commandment in, um, in lighting the lights of Hanukkah that you're supposed to light them outside. There's Kabbalistic reasons why we don't light them outside, but nevertheless, that's the, that's the commandment. So the Rebbe says, what's the purpose of lighting these candles outside? In order to illuminate the outside, this is, comes from a light which we just finished learning, the, the seven anointed men. This is a light which is above all limitation. And because it's above all limitation, it even shines outside. So the Rebbe says, one second, if the light is above limitation, so what difference does it make where you light the candles if it's above limitation? So the same light is revealed whether you light it in your house or in your basement or you light it in the street. Or what do you have to move the light around for? I thought this light was above limitation. And so the Rebbe said, you're right. The fact of the matter is, is that the lights of Hanukkah, we light them outside and not to illuminate the world, but to show that the world itself illuminates 
The light comes from outside. It's not that we are illuminating the world. The light of the world, the godliness, which is creating everything in the world and creating everything in the world for a purpose, that godliness will shine from outside itself. Every non-Jew will feel special. Every non-Jew in the world will feel that he's being created, he, she is being created by God for a purpose, and every moment is special. The outside itself will shine meaning and life. And that's really the true idea of, has, of, of, of Hasidut, to bring out the godliness in everything, to reveal the godliness in everything. And that's the same idea of, of Hanukkah. But Hanukkah, says the Rebbe, revealed it in the Torah, only in the Torah. And Yutet Kislev revealed it in everything, everything in the world, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's learn the Yom Yom for today. Why we couldn't get it yesterday? I hope we'll see what happens today. Why? Uh, there it is. Maybe I was pressing the wrong place. One second. One minute. Uh. <clears throat> and Shabbat Mavork, <clears throat> this was last Shabbos. Hasidim should go to the synagogue early in the morning. <clears throat> they should go to the early in the morning, say the whole book of Psalms, 150 Psalms. Afterwards, they should study for a mimer of Hasidut, and then they should pray, and then there should be what's called a forbringen. The Hasidim should get together and they should talk about. Uh, spiritual ideas and happy ideas. After finishing the Tilim and Shabbat, they should say the morning is Kaddish, and Kaddish after each one of the five books of Tilim should be said. Good. I, I, do, I would just like to repeat a small story that I heard yesterday. This is quite amazing, and it's a long story, and I'm not going to make it a long story. It was told, last night I, I appeared in a Chabad house in, uh, in Israel, was it Kfar Virberg? In any case, the the uh, the one running the Chabad house is was the son of a very good friend of mine that passed away, and he told me a couple of just fantastic stories. He says he has personal stories from the Rebbe, and I would just want to tell it in a very short way. I just it makes no sense the story. The story is is that <coughs> the Chabad house he, he was a helper in a Chabad house, and they made this beautiful. Passover Seder. And um, after the, the, the Passover night, so someone came up to him and said, that was just fantastic. I was just amazed. You know, I, up to now, I haven't been a religious Jew. Now I'm going to start being religious and I'm going to come to the Chabad house and I'm going to put on the villain. And, and he was praising at this. Afterwards, he came back again and he said, listen, I see you Chabad people. You have, you're all over the world. I want you to find my friend. I have a friend. His name is, uh, what was his name? Moshe. I have my friend, Yoshi. He said his first name and his last name. And I want you to find him. Now, this story happened like 40 years ago. I want you, there was no cellular phones. There was no, that. I want you to find him. So he said, well, how can I find him? What's it? He says, well, I don't have any information about him. You know, I don't know what his social security number is or anything. You have a picture, no picture. I don't have a picture of him. <clears throat> a good friend of mine, he disappeared two years ago. I don't know where he is. So they thought it was a bit ridiculous. I mean, you know, in the whole America, where are you going to find one person? You know, all they have is a name. <clears throat> and so they said, uh, okay. So the person started, called him up a few times. And they said, okay, you know what? <clears throat> and the next time we go to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, we'll ask him. So they were in New York. They went by the Rebbe, I think for dollars, whatever it is. Or they wrote a letter to the Rebbe. That's what it is. The next day, they got an answer almost immediately. You should have success. I give a blessing. You should have success. So they said, no, the Rebbe says you have success. So they went back. This was in South Carolina. They went back to South Carolina, or that's where they were. They were in the Chabad house. And they asked this fellow, when was the last place you saw him? He says, the last place I saw him was in Georgia. In Georgia. We're in Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. I don't know where it is. So Georgia. So they said, okay, makes no sense, but that's what they did. They got in a car, and there was three of them, and they went to Georgia. <laughs> you 
Georgia is, you know, is a huge place. It's like, you know, what, 10 times as big as Israel. How big is Huge place. There's millions of millions, tens of millions of people live in Georgia. Where are you going to find one person in Georgia? It makes no sense. So they went. They went. They drove. They went to a place. They tried to, to, to get gas. A whole big story. Somebody called the police on them. The police, they, 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 they told, explained the Jews. One of the policemen, luckily, he knew something about Hasidic Jews. They took him down to the station to, to help them. They looked in the books. They looked at They couldn't find any the, this guy's last name. They couldn't find his last. They couldn't find <clears throat> I don't want to say what his name was because, I mean, even though it was 40 years ago. So they couldn't find such a person. <laughs> so they stuck him with some other person, some person that was that had been arrested the previous night. He was drunk. They stuck him in the car and the person started giving them orders, go here, go there, go this. Finally, they realized the person was just crazy. Turn left, turn right, go straight. After about an hour of this, they took the guy out of the car. They, the first place they did, they pulled him out of the car and they said, you know, you're not our guide anymore. So there was a, a, a telephone booth. They went to the telephone booth. And in those days, there used to be telephone books in all the booths, right? So they looked in all the books. They couldn't find anybody with this guy's last name. Anyway, so they're wandering around. They can't figure out what's going on. Finally, in the end, they get to, they, they get to uh, like the, 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 on, near the sea or near some water or something like that. And they go into a store. <clears throat> and... Uh, the, the lady in the store says, what do you want? What are you looking for? He says, oh, we're looking. Where are you from, New York? We're looking for somebody. Who are you looking for? They say the guy's name. She says, just one second. She goes into the back room. She comes out with this Israeli fellow. He says, what are you looking for this guy for? So they said the whole story. He said, well, I know him. <laughs> and he brought him out. And he said that this fellow, he went down to the Georgia and he opened up you know, several big stores, and he didn't want the other Israelis to know about it because they would come down and make, you know, a, a competition with him. So he didn't let, he let his mother know where he was, and nobody else knew where he was. That's where he was. But they found him. And it ended up that they, they he, he had gotten married to a Jewish woman. He didn't, his children weren't circumcised. They brought a moil down. They gave him, bought him to fill in. The person became religious. He made his friend religious. An amazing story from nowhere. How many people live in America? 250 million people, something like that. And they found this guy, right? Because the Rebbe gave a blessing and they jumped in the car and they found him. <clears throat> They found him from nowhere. Incredible story. And that's what it says that the Mashiach is going to gather the Jews together one by one. One by one. Take them by the hand and gather them all together. And that's what the lights of Hanukkah also will do. Illuminate the whole world. We see even the most non-religious Jews in America, they light Hanukkah candles. It lights something up inside of them. And that's what I hope will happen to <clears throat> everyone in the world, including us. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Three o'clock, we'll learn Chumash with explanations. Yosef becomes the king of all Egypt. What he does is the king. Today, we'll learn about it.